So, hi, everybody. Hey, Mark. Mark. Uh, and uh, oh. thank you for the request for the, the Hangout tonight, Pat. What we're going to talk about is we're going to talk uh, basic editing in Capture One and some basic setups in Capture One. Uh, specific what we're going to do with the raw converted file when we're finished, okay? Okay. Um, and uh, with that, I think we'll just, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to share my screen. Can you guys hear my dog barking in the background? Yes, we can. Hopefully she's not too annoying. I can't, she's mad at me tonight. Um, so anyways, let, let me jump right in here. Um, what I've got is I've, um, uh, Pat uploaded this to the group drive. Can everybody see it? Yep. And, uh, I've just, uh, touched it with, uh, Adobe bridge, which is, um, Photoshop's librarian program. All right. Um, and it, it looks like a, a well exposed. Uh, infrared image. Uh, I, I don't see too many issues with it other than some uh, a little yeah. bit of blown out the sky here, but we'll fix that. And I just this is the file we're going to work on. So let me shrink this back down and I'm going to bring up Capture One. Uh, this is Capture One version 12. Uh, point zero 0.01. It's it's the latest update that, that has come across. Okay. Um, so when we bring up Capture One, uh, and we and we've got the we've got a, a librarian folder down here. It's showing what's in the current directory. Okay. Um, and you can see I've got the, the the raw file here. Now there are some important menus that I would like to to go over with you guys. Um, uh, immediately on the far left top, the, the, the downward uh, pointing arrow, this is the import dialog. If we click on that, that brings up our import window. And this is very, very similar to what you will see in Lightroom, but it's much more advanced. It has more options. Okay, we can choose where we're going to import from, uh, where we're going to import to, where we're going to put our, the base of our raw library on our computer. All right, we're going to, you can choose folders, uh, subfolders, and, and so on. And then you can set up macros here to create the, photo, the folders dynamically because one thing that the software is going to do is it's going to look at the active data in every image it imports. And it's going to read the year that the file was created, it's going to look at the month. It's going to look at the name of the camera. All of that EXIF data, and we can intelligently uh, capture one to go and create direct structures based on that. We're not going to get into this tonight. That is going to be a subject for uh, this coming week, OK? We can set up an automatic backup to an external drive, which I have checked, and I do. And then we have those same macros for building the same directory structure on our backup. Uh, and then we have a job code that we can assign. I was out shooting yesterday at Spring Made Pier. So the last import that I did was Spring Made Pier. And you can see this down here. And that will incorporate that in the file name should I choose to put the mac the job name up here, which I do. Okay. Uh, so that's what the import window looks like. Okay, the, the next window is for um, exposure evaluation, uh, ICC profiles and things like that. I rarely go into that because this is meant for tethered camera shooting. All right. Um, then we have a lens correction um, drop down. Um, and all of the modern cameras are going to have uh, camera data and lens data uh, that's available to capture one. And this is where you can go and make changes. You can change distortion settings, sharpness, light, fall off, uh, fringing, 
all of these things. If you find that you're having problems with the specific lenses, allows you to go in and fine tune it. All right, now this fourth drop down, this is the first of our editing menus. It looks like three bowling balls stacked on top of each other. All right, the first thing that we see is we see our histogram. And this histogram of the currently displayed image over here. And we can see that the red channel and the green channel are blown out and they are actually on the, the far right hand edge and they're climbing to the very top. This means that the red data and a lot of the red data and a little of the green data uh, is it's been chopped off. We will fix that, okay? And then we have other tools down here. We have our, um, our white balance. And this is an important tool. Now, Capture One will always take whatever white balance you have assigned in your camera and apply it to the picture. It doesn't care. It's not like Adobe products where if a white balance falls out of the range of what they find acceptable, they will change it to 5,000 degrees Kelvin automatically for you. Here it will apply it. Um, but we also have um, a white balance uh, picker tool right here. Now, the Adobe RAW Converter, ACR, both in Lightroom and Photoshop, also have this same tool. Mm -hmm. But if Adobe doesn't like your infrared image, it doesn't matter how you pick, it's still going to go back to being all red. Okay. But here we can go in and we can go see as we select different areas. We can go through and change what that white balance looks like by simply clicking. Now, a good rule of thumb is to always find white balance on green plant life. So let me go back and we're gonna change the, the, um, the white balance back to as shot. And we can see that this is not a bad white balance in camera. It really isn't. Uh, we've, we've got uh, the bronze colored sky. Um, we've got the monochromatic leaves with a slight bluish red tint but a better white balance would be this where we white balance on a very bright white leaf so now i want you to notice that the leaves are white monochromatic white and they have that blue cast and that's what we're looking for for a perfectly white balanced infrared image we still have the bronze sky yes and anywhere that's reddish colored is going to turn blue. So once we do our channel swap, these areas are going to turn blue, and these areas are going to turn shades of reds and pinks and yellows, okay? So <clears throat> I've, I've done the white balance, but now notice that the red isn't overblown, but the green is now. See this? Yes. Um, so now we're going to leave this menu and we're going to go into our main editing menu, which is this menu right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, to bring the exposure down to, to try and bring this area of blown out sky back under control. I don't care that the rest of the image is going to turn dark. See what I'm doing? I see what you're doing. And I, I am looking at these ultra white spots up here. Okay. I want to take those down and then I can go down to the shadows and I can bring the shadows back up and bring the rest of the image back. Oh, where it's. That's how you do that. Okay. Now, another thing that we can do to try and control these white burnouts is by taking the white uh, slider up. Now let's 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 bring this back. Okay. See here as I bring the white slider up. So you can do a balancing act here. Okay, we can take the exposure down a little and then control the white here as well. Okay. So this is like a teeter totter. We have all kinds 
of ways to get to the same finish point. So I will go down an exposure a little. And then I will bring up this 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 highlight uh, controller. I might go down just a little bit more, and then bring my shadows up to compensate. Okay. Nice. So it's still a little bright here, but it's not as bad as it initially was. Correct. All right, and I've shifted the contrast towards the black little of the overall image. And then another editing tool that we have is we can play with our contrast. We can take our contrast down. Or we can take it up. Now, we don't want to take it up and make these dark areas black. We can always add contrast in post-processing in Photoshop. <clears throat> so I use this control with very, very sparing movements. Brightness. See, I'm I'm even taking a little bit more out of the sky. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too worried about this up here because I can bring all of that back later on. Watch the edges of your histogram here. We don't want anything to go off the, the black end. So, Mark, would you recommend that on these type of uh, these IRs that we work on the sky um, in Capture One and kind of get it where it's reasonable and then do the rest in Photoshop? No, you want to do as much in Capture One as you can. Uh, and the reason for that, when we edit in Capture One, we have more data to work with right. when we're working in that yeah. Okay. Quick question. Yes. Is there a, I'm just, in Lightroom, there's a way to see the mask and see when you're hitting your white point and your, your black point. Oh yeah, well there there is here too. Okay, just that's that's all I want to know. I'm not asking you to go into it, but it's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Technically, we really don't need it. Uh, the histograms are just so accurate. Okay, so they're more accurate than in Lightroom. Oh heavens, yes, because we're acting on the raw data now. We're not we're not acting on the JPG uh, file that's incorporated in the raw file. Okay, and that's the difference. <coughs> All right, so we just play with these. And like I said, I don't care that this is a little dark here. All right, um, and then one last thing that I want you to look at is the clarity control. Okay, okay, <clears throat> clarity is micro color contrast sharpening, and a little bit of this goes a long way. See. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would add about, you know, 10 to 15 percent here. Okay. Now, so we've been doing some basic editing. And it's a little dark because we're trying to compensate up for the sky. All right. Um, now, up here is a control that I've added. Um, and it is my uh, process this variant from raw to tip. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to show you uh, the setup screen for processing. If you click on the, the gear here under the main menu, we can go down and we can see the process recipes. And I've told it that I want the format of the output file to be TIFF. And I can choose DNG, PSDs, uh, PNGs, TIFFs. Uh, I, I am using TIFF. And then you choose the bit depth, 16 bit, uncompressed. The, I want the uh, ICC profile applied of Adobe RGB 1998. And that also should be the profile put in to the setup of your camera. Everybody can set. The, the output profile for images, don't use sRGB. Choose Adobe RGB. Okay, while you contemplate that, I'm going to walk away, and I will be right back.
Because my little doggy buddy isn't going to behave. But she's 14 years old, so I cut her slack. Mark. Yes. So is ProPhoto an option? It ProPhoto is an option should you decide to choose it, but it in, in Photoshop. And as you can see, these are the options that we have here. Okay. Okay, we have all, uh, all kinds of profiles that you can choose. And they go on and on and on to whatever you have loaded onto your computer. Gotcha. Okay. So whatever's here is what you get to choose from. Okay. Um, it's best if we go with a balanced ICC profile, and that's going to be the subject of one of this weekend's big hangouts. Um, we need to choose, um, I, I would go with Adobe RGB 1998, and set up Adobe RGB 1998 in your camera. <clears throat> set your resolution to 300 uh, DPI, Scale is fixed. And then open with. Now, you can tell Capture One to output to these various uh, editors. Okay. So Photoshop's there, Vivisa's here. But I do believe. The under preferences that we can change what plugins. Yep, see here, I can choose Lightroom. Hmm. I okay. Know that. All right. Uh, all of these things that that are on your computer, you can choose to send a file to. Now they may not accept it, but the editor should. Okay. Okay. Now, what I do, and this is what Richard just suggested to you a little while ago, is don't open it in another piece of software. Choose none. Instead, uh, choose an output folder. Choose a folder, and when you do the raw conversion, it is going to go into those into that folder. And if that folder is as Richard had, had suggested doing, was an automatic import folder for Lightroom, that's going to solve your problem. So we will go into Capture One and we will point it at the directories where your library lives. And we will be able to directly open those files and we could also uh, uh i richard correct me if i'm wrong on this couldn't we also save it back into the directory that we take it from right but it will not be seen by lightroom because you didn't import it into the database okay so it needs to be into one that lightroom's looking at for import yeah okay all right and uh and then down here for output naming, I just have image name selected, but that was all set up on my import screen, okay? And that's what we do. That's how I have my computer set up. So let me go back to the editor. We've made these basic changes here. I'm going to tell, I'm going to click on the gear up here. It says process all selected variants. I'm going to click on it, and now notice, see, see the gears turning orange? There, it's done. The raw conversion is done, and down here on the image, there's a little white gear too. But now I want to go back, and I want to re-white balance this, okay? 
Um, hold on a second. I want to go back to white balance. I want to do as shot. So we're going to change it back to as shot. And we're going to re-export it, okay? So we're going to see two different white balances and how that is going to apply uh, inside of Photoshop. So now at this point, I'm all done, okay? Now I have my export directory set up as in uh, output. Okay. So now I'm going to jump back into bridge because that's my librarian. All right. And I have all of these directories that everybody's talking to in my editing processing uh, menus and recipes. Where everything's going. I have my output directory, which are the raw conversions. And somewhere in here is going to be your file. I just have to find it. Unless I change that directory to something else when I was futzing around. Mm -hmm. If you see it go by, yell at me. There, there they are. And we're going to shrink those down. And we're going to look at those two files real quick. Okay, and bridge. So you can see the difference in the white balance, yes? Yes. The one on the left is right out of the camera. The one on the right is where we, we, we rebalanced it inside of Capture One. Correct. Okay. So um, at this point, this is my librarian, and I can go through my output directory and look at all of the files that I have chosen to convert from raw to TIFF, and then come back at a later time and add it. I never drop a, a converted raw file directly into Photoshop. Okay. Uh, so we're going to open one of these. We'll open this one first. I'm going to just drop it right into Photoshop. And we are going to do some basic editing now in Photoshop. Okay. Now, some of this editing we could have done inside of Capture One, uh, but that's the advanced editing techniques. And I would like to save that for a second hangout. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use my Nick filter set. Um, that will run directly from within inside Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a noise reduction by running Define. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's set up on the automatic method. It's analyzing, and it's going to put some, uh, see these little squares? Mm -hmm. These are areas that Define has said there's a little bit of noise in these areas. Um, I'm not seeing an awful lot of noise in your image as, I, as I'm looking through here on the uh, uh, detail window down in the lower left-hand corner, or lower right-hand corner. Uh, so I'm just going to take the automatic and I'm going to say OK. And what it does is it creates a non-destructive uh, layer here, an adjustment layer. It's not changing the, the base image. It's putting like a, another piece of glass on top of that and doing the edits on that, okay? Um, now, there's there's two different ways to approach the next step. I, I normally tell people to go into Viviza and increase uh, the saturation about 10%, okay? Add a little bit of structure and I am going to look at the brightness. Um, and on this image, I think we have enough detail in the leaves. Let's find out what happens, OK? I'm going to say OK with that. Mark. Yes. So structure, is that more of a mid-range 
contrast as opposed to clarity, which is more of a high frequency sharp edge well, contrast? The, the, the clarity is based more on color. Okay. All right. Structure is based um, more on, well, structure, um, looking for edges. All right. So it's uh, a mid range. It's a mid range contrast. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It doesn't particularly care about color so much. Um, and it, as a side effect of using it, it will actually brighten the areas of, that you are applying it to just a little bit. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my action menu. And I'm going to go down and run my infrared adjustments. This is the chromography plugin <clears throat> that I hope you guys are using. And I'm going to click on that. I'm going to run the action. It happens really, really fast. And it's going to drop me into a hue and saturation window when it's done. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to select master. And I'm going to go down to cyan. I'm going to bring these blues back into to, to the proper range by moving the slider out of the greens more into the blues and now we can increase the brightness there a little bit uh, but we, again we're going to have to do something about these burned out spots down the line okay now i'm going to also look at the reds because we have enough data here and i'm just going to increase the saturation and watch what happens to the leaves a little bit goes a long way, okay? And I'm going to go into the magentas and see what we can do there as well. Uh, we're not getting much there, so I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna go with that. And already you're seeing a difference in, this, in the color and the structure of the various tree leaves just by running that, okay? Hey, Mark. Yes. What what conversion is this? Is it five ninety? Uh, I believe this is five ninety. Yes, Pat. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, I'm going to go into color effects, and we're just going to play with that. But what we should really do is I should jump into my V's and bring those shadows back up now. Uh, but we can do uh, that here as well. Sometimes this this works very very easily. Today was the first time I actually used this. Oh, it was? Yes. Well, what I'm looking at is I'm watching the leaves mm -hmm. and the sky right in here. And as I play with the highlights, now I'm looking at the, that, that burned out sky. But I'm not seeing an awful lot of, of change there, a little bit. not to where I like uh, and this might ultimately require a lot of editing up here uh -huh. uh, but that's okay because this is a really good example we're going to bring up the shadows a little bit here and I don't want to bring up the There, I'm going to say okay. And the rest we're going to do in Vibes. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing with the other image, okay? All right, so let's jump into Vibes really, really quick. Uh, brightness. See how the structure actually lightens it? Wow. Uh, as we bring it up, we're losing contrast, so we can bring the contrast up in that area as well. Uh, let's copy this back here. Let's go over here to this building here. Now, I don't like the blue. And it so often happens, things made out of brick uh, they're going to take on the blue cast. So uh, typically what I'll do here is I will desaturate that like this. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're going to bring the structure up. I'm going to look at the contrast again. And the brightness. All right, and then these are the edits that I would do. You know, I, I would just move this around. There, that's looking better. Over here, see? Mm -hmm. Now we can take the brightness down a bit. Hey, Mark? Yes. Uh, sometimes when I when I um, have a control point and I, I move it around, like it'll, like, let, let's say I'm on the right hand side and I'm doing brightness and I want to apply it to the whole, you know, the whole upper part, you know, different trees. Well, I'll, I'll bring the control point over and it'll bring the brightness. Oh, it, it takes the brightness away from the one part and brings it over to another part instead of keeping it bright and then carrying the brightness to the oh, oh, oh. with it you have to hold the you have to hold the alt or option key down when you grab a control point to move it i do i do i do i do alt so i don't know if i'm like uh should, are you using a mac no i'm using okay. a pc but it doesn't happen every time i like well what i do is i play around like let go of all first, let go, and then, you know, it, it, but I'm I just not sure why that happens. Okay, no, you put your finger on the Alt key, and then you, you click and hold the control point, and it's, it leaves the original one there. See the original still there? Okay. And I'm still holding down the Alt key as I move this around. I've had that happen to me, too, so it's, you've got to hold the Alt key down the whole time. Yes. Okay. But, but what you did is you left you left the control point where it is. Yes. See when I move that, see it leaves a control point where I where I came from. Yeah. All right. So now, but because we're we're desaturating certain areas of this image, we're affecting other images. So now mm -hmm. I'm going to put an anchor point in down here. We're going to bring this water back to blue. All right. And I'm going to lighten the water because it's too dark. And I'm going to add structure to the water because that will bring out the ripples a little bit better, and it'll bring out the um, uh, uh, the, the colors and the tonality. And I am going to look at this water, and I'm going to take away a little bit of green because it's just a little bit too aqua. I'm going to add just a touch of blue. And I can take away a little bit of red, not too much. We don't want purple, we want blue. And when I get it the way I want it, I'm just going to start copying uh, this to various parts of the water. And if you find that you don't want the, the water to be uh, so deeply colored, then you can go back and you can readjust this. Okay, so now let's go up and look at the, these clouds. God, these are terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate those clouds completely. All right. And I'm going to add some structure to them. All right. And then I am just simply going to copy this control point around and just lay it on the clouds. All right. And then we can always do something with this with cloning later. Now I'm going to put a control point on the blue sky and bring that sky back. Now the, the sky is a little bit dark, so you know we might want to brighten that a little, and it's a little too saturated. So we might take the saturation down a little and make that, yeah. So let's delete these control points just by selecting them and hitting the delete key and then recopy this edited color palette to the blue sky. Okay. Um, and you see, we're starting to, to get somewhat normal looking clouds. We're not quite there yet, uh, but, but they're, they're, they're getting there. Okay. Unfortunately for the clouds, this is going to require um, some specialized work up here with, with cloning, all right? Oh, yeah. 
All right, now then the last thing I want to do is I just want to work on the tree. Um, I'm going to bring the brightness up on that tree. I'm going to add a whole bunch of red. I am going to add some green because we're going to shift this to yellow and I'm going to take away some blue. Okay, now I am going to increase the size of this. And I am going to just go to the edges of that tree. Now I'm going to go here and I, I'm going to leave those as kind of a dark orangey color because that gives me a nice contrast to the yellow. Now some trees, especially evergreen style trees, they just have a real hard time with colors and moving the color sliders isn't going to do a lot. But the warmth slider will kind of bring it in to match the other tree. See that? Uh -huh. Now let's brighten that little spot. Yep. Come over here. And I noticed that you really don't care about all these <coughs> other flying areas that you want you're working on because you just go drop an anchor point and bring those all back. Yep. Yep. Now I'm gonna go bright here again. Yeah, I don't care about areas that are being affected by the okay. edits. Okay. Because I will drop an anchor point and bring okay. them back. You are absolutely right. Now let's try here taking that saturation down and seeing if we can do something different here. Uh, going with a, a much lighter color. Uh -huh. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I like that. And then over here, let's copy the yellow one over here and drop him around. All right. And then this orange one, we're going to copy back here. And that's some sort of an evergreen, isn't it? So let's take the warm slider up on that to see if we can bring that back a little, okay? And this is basically how I would work this. Uh, let's do one more thing. Let's go to this dark area under here and brighten these shrubs up down here and sh shrink this down. Let's see if we can get some coloration here. That's too bright there, isn't it? Yep, and this one here is too bright. Funny how when the light strikes them in different areas, it changes the color. Okay, so aside from the sky, which I, I don't want to spend an hour on the clouds for this, that this image didn't turn out too bad for 590 nanometers. It's pretty. Okay, it, the, the, the water's a little blue, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's okay. So we'll... Mark, let me ask you a question, because when I was watching the video from last night with, on Richards, you were talking about where you were cloning on the boats and cloning and taking things out, and Richard was concerned about that when an image is enlarged, that the areas that have been worked on like that, either cloned or a healing brush or whatever, show up. Well, so they can be if you don't do a good job. Okay. Uh, if you take your time and you work slowly and look closely at the area you're working on, you're going to get good results. Okay. What you don't know is that I sat there and dreamed about Richard's image last night after <laughs> I went to bed. Uh, so when I got up this morning, I went back and I re-edited around that man. <laughs> All right. Matt, are you doing any printing? You know what, Richard, in all the years that I've messed around with photography, I have never printed anything. Okay, then you're good. It's My biggest problem is... I print for competition and I like to try to make like up to 16 by 20 prints and I make bigger prints for my office. Right. And once you, you print a big image and you sit and you look at it, then you start seeing things that are harder to see on a screen. Right. Right. I do know someone though who actually takes, a he takes it to Costco, believe it or not, he has a very large image printed only for to look for anything in their imperfections that he missed. 
before he actually takes it to the, the printer and has it done for competition. Well, that would make sense. I mean, because I do work prints. Yeah. That's the first thing I did after I thought I was happy. Well, I yeah, know because when you look at it, you find all kinds of things wrong. You, know, you start finding dust spots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Richard, do you print your own images? Yes. What what kind of printer do you use? An Epson thirty eight eighty. That's if if you if you want to be the complete photographer, you'll 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 print on your own too. Um, but it's it's a skill like anything else, so it's not for the faint of heart because there is a learning curve to it. Oh, a very painful one. Well, that that kind of depends on the workflow you use, but yeah, it can be. Oh, I mean, just initially figuring out that I had checked a print preview button on the driver that mm -hmm. was making everything magenta. Oh well, yeah, there's, there's idiosyncrasies that have to be learned. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah, so. All right Richard, now. Richard is, more, Pat, uh, Richard, is it more economical to print yourself or to have them done in a lab? Okay, when I got to a certain level in the camera club. You had to print your own. You couldn't use a lab. Okay. That was required to advance to the next level. I got it. Okay. So I was using a lab for beginner and intermediate, but when I went to the master's level, I was I'm not supposed to um, uh, have anyone else print it for me. Okay. And and then I I found a a great joy in printing and and also. I, I, once you start printing larger prints, you start seeing things that you miss on a screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I enjoy printing very, very much. All right. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you, Pat, is when we're all done with this, we're going to go up to File, mm -hmm. Save As. Yep. And you're going to save this in that that hot directory that Richard is talking about for Lightroom. Okay. All right. You're going to change the name. Uh, edited River Cabin. Okay. And, all right. And 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 save it now. Normally, normally, you will um, flatten these layers once you have uh, the print the uh, image the way you want it. But I'm going to leave these layers for you. But once you but once you flatten those, then can you reopen them again? No. Okay. Okay. Mark. Yes. Are you working in the Adobe RGB color space in Photoshop? Yes. Okay. Yep. And you don't save it to PSD. You save it to TIFF. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. TIFF, oh. PSD, it, it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, if you go up under edit and go down to color settings. Right. Um, uh, and actually with this new one, this got changed to sRGB. Do you see that? Uh-huh. Uh, I just updated uh, Photoshop a, a couple of days ago. <coughs> uh, so, damn it, they burned me. Um, but so this needs to be changed to Adobe RGB, which is right there. Um, uh, for grayscale, dot gain of 20 is, is pretty good. Now, you used Apple RGB there. Oh, you're right. I did. Thank you. There you go. Yep. Um, so that's how you set the color space up here. All right. I'm glad you asked that because I, I that would have pissed me off. <laughs> because this new version completely did away with the old version and uh, replaced it, so it, it everything came up from scratch again. Well, they usually bring over your 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 settings with it, the new it, version. All they brought over were the plugins. So let's open the other one real quick. All right, uh, and let's let's look at this. Um, the sky doesn't seem quite so bad here. 
Uh, we run the same things again. We, we, My God. What? Guess what it did to me. Did it to you too? I had not a clue. Huh. I've been doing this for like a month or two. See, aren't you glad you, you mentioned that? I'm glad I looked after I caught it with you. Darn. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, yeah. Now the, I have to go back and re remember what the dot gain is with pro photo. It's different. Yes, it is. But I, I would stay away from pro photo. All right. Uh, there isn't a printer in the world that can print in the pro photo color space. And since the camera is, is going to be working in, in Adobe, um, you, you're going to have some consistency between the camera, the monitor, Photoshop, and then the output profile. All right. Remember I was telling you I was having some problems cloning? Yes. I was working in sRGB. Uh, well, I was too. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> All right. So let's take our highlights down. Take our midtones down. That's going to be the biggest change. Bring the highlights up. Our shadows down. We're going to go with that. Just a real quick. I just want you to see the difference between how white balance affects the, the image when we do the, the channel swap, OK? Yeah. Um, we could go into. Um, Actually, let's, let's take this one step forward and we'll go and divide these up and we are going, we will lighten this. We'll add structure to bring back a little bit of the contrast to it. Now we can darken it just a little. All right. It looks kind of muddy. Huh? It looks kind of muddy. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's okay. I mean, we're still dealing... Uh, with an, an, an unswapped image. All of that will bring in uh, into control down the line. You, the other one looked muddy too. Now see the intense blues that we got? Uh-huh. Okay, so we're going to go to cyans. And we're going to shift more to blue, and I think we'll just lighten it a, a lot more here. There you go. Okay. And then we're going to go into uh, the reds. See if we can bring up, yeah, a, a little bit there. Uh, and then we're going to go back to master. And I'm going to slightly lighten the entire image and say, OK. Um, it, it, it's, it's very similar to what we got before. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still getting a real close to the same colors. Um, but it didn't do us a bit of good up here in the sky. Yeah. And uh, the, the data over here is, is not so good again. So we're going to have to go in and edit it by hand. So experiment with this, okay? Yeah, okay. All right. So let me close this out. So let us... Let's go out of here. Let's get out of bridge. Actually, let's go into bridge again. Let's see if we can find just kind of a normal. With Lily. Yeah, we're going to play with Lily. Yeah, we're going to do Lily with water attitude. Okay. Now, a color image is going to be a little bit different starting out than the um, the infrared. Okay. Um, I'm still going to run define. Okay. Now, this is a much larger file size, so th this will run slightly slower. Not too terrible bad, okay? 
I like what Define does. Oh, I do too. I think it's one of the better uh, noise reducers on the market. Now, there's lots of them. It just depends on what you like. I am just a big believer in in the in the Nick in the Nick system. Okay, so I run Define. Now I'm going to run back into Color Effects Pro, and this is where I'm going to do a a large part of my editing. All right. But as you can see, this goes really, really fast. Okay. Now, of these processing sweeps, this is because they're they're going through and and they're putting this image in all of these. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to basically always start with total contrast. So here it is off. There it is on, and you can see. Uh, it's it's really bringing the colors out. Yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the highlights up and bring out detail in the sand. Usually we have to take the midtones down. But we're not seeing an awful lot of that except in the shadows of the sand. So I'm going to see if I can enhance those a little bit. And you just move these until you get it right about there. And then we'll play with the shadows. Now, this is where we bring the contrast back into the image in the shadow slider. This, this, this balances everything, okay? Uh, saturation. I think I'm going to bump it down a little bit to try and take away the red a little. Play with the shadow recovery. Uh, that's not too bad. I am done with this for now. I asked her if she wanted me to get her some water in her bucket, so she went and got her bucket. She was bringing it to me. Okay. Now, I want you to let me make this full size. And I'm going to turn this layer on and off before, after. Okay, a little bit too much on her skin, especially here on her forehead. See that? Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you may want to go back in and delete total contrast and run it again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to jump right into my visa, make it full screen. And I'm going to put a control point on her little sundress. I'm going to add some brightness and some structure. And some contrast, just a little bit. And let's see what the color is looking like. It would help if I got out of the contrast slider, wouldn't it? There we go. Bring a little bit of color in there. I'm going to go to the uh, the red, and I'm going to take the, the saturation down on that a little, because I don't want that to be the main subject, OK? Right. Uh, I'm going to go up here in her hair, and I'm going to add structure to her hair. And maybe brighten it just one or two percent. And uh, then I will create another one. I'm going to put it down here in the sand. And I'm just going to see if brightening the sand a little bit, adding structure here is going to really work in the sand. And I'm going to move that around. Okay, and I don't mind all of this slop, all of these toys, because this tells a story about a baby playing in the, at the beach. I think it looks fine. Okay, now, one last thing. I am going to, dang it. See, I, I clicked on okay. My fingers are two steps ahead of my head. 
So I'll jump into Viviza again. I have one last editing thing that I want to do. I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab my magnifier and I'm going to zoom in on her face. All right, I'm going to drop a control point in the white of her eyes. And I'm using the little preview one at the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to get out of the magnifier. I'm going to shrink that down to a tiny circle. And I'm going to add brightness to her eye. Now, don't worry that I'm brightening the skin. We don't care about that. Can you tell me why? Probably going to do something with it later on. No, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to put a um, anchor point. An anchor okay. point there. Right here. How? We'll increase. Actually, I might just. Yeah, that looks better. Brighten up the eye socket a little. Let's shrink that down. And now we can brighten it a lot. Oh, Mark, that reminds me. Somewhere, maybe in the video last night, you were talking about a mouse that you use where you just slide your finger. What mouse is that? Oh, it's 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 a it's an Apple Magic Mouse. Uh, Apple. Hey, you know I'm sorry. I you know people have to <laughs> out in the world of PCs. Well, I would imagine we've got something like that somewhere. What's that? A mouse similar to that. Oh yeah, I, I would think you would too. I want to go find that. Uh, but you could also go with a Wacom tablet. Mm -hmm. she, she, she's just dirty everywhere. So now I'm going to say, okay. Let's see, uh, I just want a, just a hint of white around her eyes. Yeah. See the difference? Mm hmm. I also um, de-emphasize that hot spot there that I put there. It's my fault. Um, but see, when I'm done with this, you know, it's you can see it. It makes a difference. Okay, it it really really does. Um, I might at this point let's shrink this down a little. Uh, let me go into my uh, crop tool, and I'm going to select, this is my sensor size, and I'm going to go with a 4 by 3 crop ratio. And I'm going to get back up there, rotate you, and I am going to bring in just slightly. See, I can't do too much because I don't want to cut the shoe off, right? Unless you clone out the shoe. Yeah. Or the truck, too. Say. I like the truck's color. I do, too. But I, I don't like where she's standing in the frame. For this one, I, I want kind of a bullseye. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and, you know, that's just all personal. Right. Um, so, yeah, I got rid of the truck. Uh, I more centralized her. Uh, if she were standing in a slightly different direction, I probably would have cropped off the, the, the right-hand side a little bit more and have her looking into the frame. Um, but when I'm done, I will go into File, Save As, and then choose the directory that Lightroom's monitoring. Okay. Uh, and we're just going to say, well, gee, that's the archival directory. Okay. And then I'm going to go into the file name. I'm going to say Lily at Holly's Island Beach. Give it a name that's meaningful. Save it. 
as a TIFF. Okay. Now, social media. You asked about social media. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I've saved my full size images, I will go up under image, image size, make sure that the width and the height are linked together with this little. If, if those lines aren't there, they're not linked. So we want them linked. And I'm going to change um, my file size down to 2,000 pixels on the longest side. All right? Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to go File, Save As again. And this time I'm going to put it into a directory called Working Directory that is for iPad, iPhone, and websites. Okay. And I'm going to save it as a JPG. Um, and wow. it will embed the correct color profile, which I don't care about for web work. And that is done. Now, let me go show you what we've got. Um, so let's go into my working directory. The working directory is my iPad, okay, my iPhone, and where I'm working at on the web. Uh, if I go look at these directories, I have abstracts, animals, you know, black and whites, all of these different criteria that I'm saving these small files under. Plants, publish, nautical patterns, just, okay, it's, it's just kind of roughly organized. Mm -hmm. The working directory is where everything goes during editing, and then eventually it'll get copied out into those other directories. But every time that there she is, okay, every time I edit a full size file, I make a small file. Okay. To go on my iPad, my iPhone, and these are what I'll post on Facebook and the other social sites. Okay. All right, and that's how I do it. Uh, you can do this in Lightroom very, very easily also. Mm -hmm. um, but since I'm editing in Photoshop, I just do it in Photoshop. All right. Okay. Um, questions? All right, so we'll stop sharing. I will come back. You can unclick me now at the bottom. Once you click someone, I don't think you can unclick them, can you? Yeah, just click this, click it again. Hey, Mark. Yes. Have you done a, uh, a hangout on on what you just did in terms of saving and saving files and storage and directories and so on? I actually did. But, but the video of it got got ruined. So we're going to do that all again. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that is something that we will uh, repair this week. Um, any other questions? No, this was a good good session. I appreciate it. I gotta go get ready for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, tomorrow's my my wife works at a hospital, and tomorrow's her. She works all weekend. She was there all day yesterday, all night yesterday, all day today, all night tonight. Uh, so she'll be she'll be home tomorrow morning at six. So let me stop the broadcast.